I'm Paul Brown and I started writing articles for technical magazines when I was 17. Between then and now I have been a writer, editor and publisher for magazines like Android User, Ubuntu User, Raspberry Pi Geek and Linux Magazine among others in both English and Spanish. That is back when print tech magazines were a thing of course. Writing for magazines that uh, had to be sold on newsstands meant uh, having to compose technical documentation which was both pedagogical and entertaining. Uh, spending enough time doing that and editing other people's texts to do that and you end up developing techniques that help make your writing more accessible. You don't really know who your audience is or how much they're going to know. Internal documentation aimed initially at a very specific group of people is often pushed out elsewhere because it is good enough or we don't have time or money to change it. Your documentation may be used in more ways than you originally anticipated. Daryl from sales may need to convince a client of the benefits of the product and all he has to get his case upon is your technical manual. Your boss may need to convince the big boss not to cut funding to the IT department, even though big boss doesn't really understand many of the aspects of IT. When big boss says, all right, give me some stuff I can read so I can make an informed decision, all your boss has for her is your technical manual. Someone asks you to adapt your technical manual into a user manual. Finally, do it for your own sake. Over time, you develop a blind spot that stops you from seeing your writing devolve into techno babble. I'm going to give you a moment to try and digest that text. Moving on, I'm pretty sure that the amount of jargon in your writing increases the longer you spend working in a given niche. The first most obvious thing you can do to make your writing more accessible is work on buzzwords and jargon. Let's start with an example. Visitors to the Kirigami website were expected to figure out what Kirigami is from this sentence. This is the first sentence they would read on the website. What is the problem? Kirigami is the name of the thing, so nobody knows what it is yet. Lightweight is a buzzword. Interface is jargon. Framework is jargon. Mobile is jargon. Convergent is jargon and the buzzword. Applications is jargon. People say programs. The only common English words in that sentence are is, a, for, and. I work a lot with software developers who build graphical programs for end users. Apart from application, other favorite words include mobile, desktop, environment, and framework. I ask people who use computers but are not techies about these words. Mobile is a phone. A desktop is a rectangular piece of wood with legs that supports your stapler, pens and mouse. An environment is where wild animals and plants live. And the framework is a bunch of shelves. Not even when I gave my interviewees the context of computers, we're talking about computers, were they able to come up with anything close to what these terms mean for my colleagues. Then there is the thing with acronyms. 
here is another example. And again, let's enjoy this moment. Apart from being heavy on the buzzwords and jargon, it is even more difficult to understand because of the acronyms. UI and HIG, or WE and HI, are a couple of classics in my niche, but unknown outside it. They both describe easy concepts, though. The obvious course of action is to unfold the acronyms. UI translates to user interface and HIG to human interface guidelines, which helps a bit, but not much. They are still very jargony. If you feel you must use jargon and acronyms, add an explanatory sentence early on. The user interface UI is what the user sees, the workspace, buttons, menus, etc. The visible part of an application. You can even pepper these, these explanations or variations thereof subtly through the first chapter or so. What the user sees in the user interface is dot dot dot. The dialogues and menus you, you can see in the user interface dot 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 etc. It will make your first few chapters longer, but do it enough, and by chapter three you can use your acronyms confidently without fear of losing your reader. That said, from time to time. Uh, uh, throughout your documentation, you may want to throw in the unfolding explanation to keep the meaning fresh in the reader's mind. The other thing uh, you have to pepper your docs with is examples. Ideally, examples will include not only how to use the tech, but, but also what the tech would be used for. This rules out Hello World. Instead, you can explain how an analog to digital converter chip works by hooking a potentiometer up to a Raspberry Pi. Raspberry Pis cannot read analog signals, and then using the contraption as a paddle in a game of blockout. Or you can explain the concept of video tracking by stabilizing a clip of some daredevils doing stunts on their motorbikes. Or you can explain how to use Linux's GPS daemon by having a laptop read the GPS signal from a mobile phone while you drive around in your car. But select your examples carefully. Make sure they wrap tightly around what you want the reader to focus on. That is, the bits that are not about the subject matter of your documentation should be minimal and or self-explanatory or explained elsewhere, maybe in someone else's docs. One thing you should avoid are metaphors. They don't help. Your product is not like a tram, a bowl of rice, or a squeaky toy, unless of course it is really one of those things. Metaphors invariably fail sooner or later and only create confusion. Using them in documentation is like requiring your reader to climb to the top of your building by leading them to the stairs in another building. So to summarize, translate jargon, expand acronyms, use practical examples, and avoid metaphors. Digging out a baseline for your documentation is not such an obvious technique as the one we saw before, but once you find it, it will help you focus your writing and grab the attention of your readers. Building your text from the baseline up makes them more intelligible and easier to understand. This is the template for all baselines. The thing will improve something for someone. The thing is the technology, product, whatever your documentation is about. The something is the issue it solves, what it makes better. The someone is the person or people the thing benefits, usually the readers you are targeting. Daryl from Sales will want to know about the glossy new features the product comes with so he can use them as a selling point.
Big Boss will want to know how IT contributes to fatten the bottom line for the shareholders. And the end user will want to know how the product makes their life better before going into anything else. Let's take some of the examples we talked about before and figure out their baselines. Here are the first lines from a technical description of an analog to digital converter chip. As usual, take a moment to digest that. I mean, fair enough, this is from a data sheet. It has to be highly technical. But you wouldn't write the introduction of a chapter on ADCs like that. Instead, think of the reader and dig out the baseline. The thing is an analog to digital converter chip. The something it improves is that it provides a way to read data from analog sensors like potentiometers, thermometers, altimeters, etc. The people who benefit are owners of computers that lack analog input lines, which is most of them. Written out in your documentation, it could read something like this. An analog to digital converter chip, or ADC for short, lets you read data from analog sensors like potentiometers, thermometers and altimeters into a computer that lacks an analog input line, like the Raspberry Pi. The video effects software described the tracking feature like this. This description is much less acceptable, since it is supposed to be from a manual. It gives no indication to the reader why or how she can use this feature, and it includes details that serve no purpose and are completely unhelpful. Again, uh, looking for a baseline comes in useful. The video tracking feature uh, automatically follows the movement of an object in a clip and you can use it to stabilize the video around said object so you don't have to do it frame by frame by hand. The introductory sentence to Linux's GPS daemon is quite good. It tells you clearly what it is, but it also goes into a bit too much detail. Again, we can improve it by digging out its baseline. Linux's GPS daemon reads data from an external GPS device, and it is useful for developers who need to integrate location data into their programs that run on machines that don't have a GPS device. I think more or less anywhere, and not only to introduce the topic of your text. You can use a baseline to explain a component, an underlying technology, or a feature. Take the following. It is from a list of new features in the Linux kernel I was asked to rewrite. Take a moment. A little research and some digging to reach the baseline allow me to rewrite it like this. The chatty tone was required by the piece, but you could have written that paragraph more formally, and it would have still been easier to understand than the original. Note also how the rewritten version contains essentially the same information as the original. The original is just obtuse. Dig out a baseline to kick off your text, yes, but also every time you're about to begin a new section, anytime you introduce a new topic, or simply have a tricky paragraph you're not sure how to approach. The aim is that your reader, regardless of their level of technical knowledge, can always come away with a broad idea of what you're talking about. If you start by listing features or the libraries used, stating what the thing is instead of what it is used for, or forgetting about your audience entirely, 
and all these things happen way more often than you think, the chances of you never getting through but to a small number of readers is virtually guaranteed. Not much longer, I promise. Before we finish, I must warn you that you can seemingly adhere to the baseline formula and still produce gibberish. The problem here is too much jargon and terms so vague that they are meaningless. What kind of systems are they talking about, for example? And no, the context did not help. Doesn't everything consume and produce data in one form or another? What does empower even mean? This is the most pointless word. If there is one thing you take away from this talk, let it be to never use empower. The baseline cannot help you if your words are rubbish. Which brings us full circle back to not only talking about the baseline, but also the individual words you should avoid and change. How did our friends at Kirigami do, for example? Quite well, it turns out. As a reminder, he is the original again. Kirigami is a lightweight interface framework for mobile and convergent applications. And here is the version with a reworked vocabulary and a baseline focus. Kirigami. Build apps that adapt beautifully to phones, desktop computers, and everything in between. You may argue that apps is jargon, but eh, one jibber out of 14 words is not bad. As for the baseline, the thing is Kirigami. The thing it improves it how, is how it facilitates building beautiful apps for phones and computers. And build is an imperative. So the beneficiary is you. Here's the acronym heavy example we mentioned at the beginning of this talk. New controls were added to aid with the agile crafting of... Com oh, I can't even... Sorry. By setting a clear baseline and translating jargon and acronyms to human, we get... We added new controls to help you quickly create graphical applications that work on both desktop and mobile platforms. Our development software makes all your apps look good and fit into all environments. Which, sure, it is 33% longer than the original, but dare I say 100% more intelligible? And that's what this is all about. Thank you. So where should we start? I want to start with this one, selfishly because it's a question that I've gotten a lot when I've talked about removing like non-inclusive language from documentation. Um, do you think there's a line that you can cross to make the reader feel, you know, maybe less intelligent? If you cross it, you know, you might be like excessively explaining and that might be condescending in its own. And what do you do to find that balance? Yeah. What do you think about that? I, yes, uh, I can see how you could think that. But when when you are uh, when you use this, okay, I, I called it baseline. I don't really know if there is another name for it. Uh, you are not actually uh, uh, talking down to anyone. You're just sort of like bringing out something that was already in there, uh, and often you're just changing the order of of things. So. Um, it, often what happens is that uh, text documentation will start explaining what the thing is and then later explain what it is used for. The baseline, what starts out is it, it tells, in, tells the reader what it is used for first. Mm -hmm. And you do that because then the reader will know from the first sentence if they are on the right thing, on the right application or on the right technology or whatever so you say this technology mm, will help you with this yeah and then says oh okay this is what i need and then you can continue reading it doesn't necessarily dumb anything down if you if you don't want to that that is another that is another topic the, the baseline has nothing to do with that Absolutely. I love being able to read something and knowing that it is exactly what I'm looking for before I even I mean, go you can say, You can say, for example, this platform is a CMS, but if the reader and most of us will understand what the CMS is because we work in this 
in this uh, in this niche, right? But uh, a lot of people would not. So if you say, well, this thing is this thing that we are presenting to you will do this, this, and this for you, mm -hmm. and then say, and that is what we call a CMS, right? Then we are it, you're giving the same information you're not dumbing down anything and but you're just changing the order of things absolutely and then on kind of a similar line when how do you convince your colleagues to maybe take this kind of use case approach or use those clearer words in you know place of their favorite jargon uh with great difficulty <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> Yes, they they do like their they do like their jargon and so on. Uh, I think the the um, I think the best way is probably uh, is not actually telling anyone but proving it. So um, what happens uh, is that uh, a lot of uh, developers they write blog posts and things like that, but they write them for their peers and. Uh, mm -hmm. The area I am working in now, which is promoting free software to 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 end users, uh, that doesn't help me. I need to promote uh, precisely outside their peers because what we want is more people to read about their stuff. Um, so, so what we what we do in 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 our team is that we often rewrite their stuff and we publish it somewhere else we have an official um, sort of like blog for the project which is called the dot and we can see for example how many people respond to one and the other and then we can we can come in with with evidence and say look this we have said the same thing as you but in a different way and we have we have much more response, etc., and like that, kindly, you know, not so like slapping them in the face with data and say, "Look, you're useless" or whatever, you know. Uh, no, but you can so sort of say, "You see, there, you don't have to change what you say. You just have to change the way you say it, or you have to change the order." We can help with you with that, and we have proof that this works. And normally, developers like data; they like to know that that certain things work. Uh, and that you present evidence that they work. Absolutely, I think that's a really good approach, especially for such a difficult topic for a lot of people. Um, and then kind of switching gears a little bit, I'm curious, well, I'm, a, I'm also curious, but also Laura is curious, um, if you have any tips on dealing with lots of context switching. So maybe if you have di like vastly different audiences for different yeah. you know, pieces of content, and you're constantly having to change that approach. Like, yeah, do you have any tips or strategies? Uh, well, uh, I, I always, uh, uh, okay, this is, there is really no, there are no real shortcuts for this. I mean, you have to, when you have to write for different audiences, you have to write different texts. There's, there's not much you can do about that. Uh, uh, but it is also, it is always useful to start from, from this baseline. And then build up from there, or and and choose the the parts of the topic that are going to interest your readers. So you know, you you can always start from that baseline. Always look for this. This is gonna this is gonna sound a bit you know uh, Zen wishy washy spiritualist thing, but you know, look for the inner truth of the technology. What you know, <laughs> how it really benefits the the people, and then. Uh, uh, also, techno the, uh, the technology or the app or whatever will will uh, benefit different people in different ways. So you have to adjust your baseline for that. So I don't really have any shortcuts for that, to be honest. I mean, uh, I start That's from okay. the baseline and build up to to where what you think your readers are going to be interested in. No, absolutely. And I think what you said about also, you know, having different documents for different audiences is also a really good point, because I think sometimes we try to condense everything into one and then it might just be more helpful in the long run to have these different resources for different yeah. audiences. Absolutely. All right. And then um, wondering if 
trying to sort this out. All right, ooh, good one. So explaining acronyms and jargon like right at the beginning makes a lot of sense when you are you know, doing these kind of linear documents or print documents where you know exactly how the reader is going to approach it. But yeah. what about maybe electronic documentation or other kind of, um, I don't know what else to say besides like free form where you're not sure where that journey is gonna begin for the reader. Like, are there any extra measures that you can take to ensure that everything is clear enough without maybe well, writing out these long to explanations? Be fair, uh, to be fair, if you're using electronic documentation, uh, uh, surely uh, uh, there are no page limits. I mean, when we were making magazines, we had four pages for an article. That's it. Mm -hmm. you, can expand, you can expand the, the acronyms in every single chapter if you want. I mean, I don't see why this would be a, a problem, right? You know, uh, because uh, also if anybody's reading it in order anyway, if you, uh, by the time you get to num uh, uh, chapter 13, if you've only expanded the acronym in chapter one, in chapter 13, you've already forgotten what it's all about. So expanding it in at, at the beginning or, or, or explaining the jargon at the beginning of every single chapter, I don't think it is, it is a bad thing. You have no, you know, ha you don't have no space restrictions or anything like that. And you can use just, you know, search and replace. So you can do that in one swoop. You know, I yeah. don't know. I think it's a, I think it's an artificial, uh, an artificial uh, imposition to just do it once, especially if you're using uh, electronic documentation. Great. And then just really quick, cause we have like 30 seconds left. What would be if you had like one takeaway that you want people to leave this and go implement in their documentation tomorrow, what would it be? Don't use the word empower. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so guilty of that, but no, you know. No. <laughs> the, no, every, every uh, piece of technology, every invention, every app, has a baseline. You just have to find it. You just have to get the developer and say, how does this help? How does this help your users? And that is the baseline. And you can extract it from everything. Absolutely. That's amazing. All right, we will end it on that note. Thank you so much, Paul, for joining us today and being such a great speaker and Q&A answerer. I appreciate it. Right, bye-bye.